All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Charles Barnett, and I have um, a powerful word and revelation for us, us this morning. So I'm just going to get right into it. And uh, hopefully uh, when you see this on YouTube that you will uh, subscribe and uh, also um, share it because it's very, very, very good, very powerful. All right, let's get in. We're going to talk about responding to prophecy or the rima, basically the anointed word that proceeds from God's mouth or the dreams and the visions or the messages that God gives. Um, responding to prophecy. So we're just going to use the, the, the general term prophecy because that's what it is. It's a prophetic uh, message. Responding to prophecy. Very important how we respond to prophecy in this day and age. Just like it's always been important how we respond to prophecy. How we respond to God's written word and how we respond to God's spoken word. Uh, more so than not, um, the spoken word, the prophetic word, the rhema word, um, the anointed word uh, is always um, under scrutiny uh, and um, sometimes for good reason, but others for very bad reasons. But let's talk about this. We want to talk about uh, the different responses, attitudes, and um how we ought to be since uh, there is a revival and a restoration of prophecy and prophetic messages uh, in this last end time prophetic move of God Almighty Jesus Christ through His Spirit in the Ecclesia, the body of Christ, the church. So, first of all, there's one way to respond to prophecy, and this is it right here. Did God say that? Was it really God? Did God say that? Did God really say that to me? Was that really God? Was that really Holy Ghost? Now, many of us have probably said that, especially if uh, we've heard an anointed uh, word or we've someone's prophesied over us or we heard a tongue and interpretation of tongues or to give the prophecy or... Or, um, you know, someone relate a prophetic dream or vision, or we had a prophetic dream or vision. A lot of times we'll say that. Did God say that? Did God send that? Was that really God? But let's see where, um, and we become very comfortable with this response. And many of us, that's our go-to response right off the bat. But I want to show you what God showed me concerning this. And this is why... I'm dealing with this today because God revealed this to me and I hopefully am uh, having a revelation to you is there is a root cause for that type of quick response uh, toward um, prophecy. And it starts in Genesis chapter 3 and I'm going to read it. I'm, I have my notes on my, uh, um, my um, phone, uh, but I do have the Bible right here. I also have Bible apps, but I'm just going to go with my phone. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. And most of these scriptures are going to be an amplified version because it kind of breaks it down real well. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty, subtle, skilled in deceit than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent, Satan, said to the woman, Eve, Can it really be that God has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? He said, did, you know, hath God said you shall not eat from the tree? See, that's where it comes from. It never started with Adam and Eve. It started with Satan when he incubated himself in a serpent and he tricked them. Did God really say that? And see, that's the problem with us. It's very carnal and also demonic to question prophecy in such a way. Now... I'm not saying that we can't test all things. The Bible says try everything, but it does. It also says don't despise prophesying, but just you know, know your word and know God to the point where you can uh, measure, engage, and test if it's true or not. It doesn't say despise. It doesn't say to quench. It doesn't say to cast out. It doesn't say to ridicule. It doesn't say to do any of that. It doesn't say to cast doubt because. Uh, there is a fine line 
that we can slip into a demonic influence of doubt, which Satan cast into Adam and Eve. He said, did God really say that? You shall not eat from the tree? And then he says he starts to give them reason. He starts to reason with them. He knows that if you eat from that tree, you'll be just as powerful and knowledgeable as him. Right? And then all of a sudden, we lose it. We lose it and we become... Well, let's just move on. Let's just move on. This is what we should be. Let's not, marry, let's not uh, dwell on what we already know. Because we know what happens to us. We know the negativity that starts to give birth in us. We know the the uh, uh, the downfall that we start to go into, and then the slump, and and then the, the devil has us, and we're defeated, and it just totally messes us up. And then we just go with the flow of the flesh. We all know that because we've all done it. But let's step up now. That I just wanted you to know what God showed me. God says that started in the garden. That didn't start with me, and it didn't start with people. It started with the devil. It's Satan. This is satanic. To always question and come against prophecy. Mm. It's time we shake that demon off. Hallelujah. We need to shake that devil off. That's a prophetic word right now the Lord is telling me to tell you. Shake that demon off. Shake that prophetic doubt off. Shake off that demonic influence. It's a lie. Thus saith the Lord. I rebuke that spirit right now. Loose them. Loose everybody under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, send forth angels with your spirit, Lord, and do battle. Open their eyes and open their ears and destroy the doubt and the unbelief and the lies and the deceit and the questioning against prophetic movements, prophetic messages, dreams, and visions. In Jesus' name, be Thou loosed and set free in Jesus' name. Woo, sheba, sheba, bo, 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 kuriya, ma, shata, baha. Woo, in Jesus' name. And whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that was powerful. Woo, sheba, ba, shoba, bo, 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 ka. Mm, believe it and receive it in Jesus' name. And so this is how we should be. And this is what God wants us to do. And this is... Uh, 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 the fresh move in the body of Christ and throughout this world is that our attitude needs to be as such when we get uh, a prophetic movement or prophetic message, dream, vision, or anything that comes to us, prophecy, yes, I believe and will obey your word, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't focus so much on the messenger. Don't focus so much on, on uh, 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 your surroundings. Focus on who sent the messenger, who sent the message. Focus on the message giver. Focus on the origin of prophecy, and that is Jesus Christ, our Almighty God. So when you get a prophetic message coming your way, we need to say, yes, I believe and will obey your word, Lord. Say, yes, Lord, I believe and I obey. Then go back and ask God, give me some specifics and let's... You know, look at it through the word and 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 follow along through the prompting of the Holy Ghost because we have an anointing from the Holy One that he can teach us all things and let God elaborate on it. Sometimes I don't have to when I get a prophetic message. Sometimes I already know. I know I, I've been in this for over 30 years and I've been through prophetic uh, 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 prophecy prophet and apostle training for the last uh, 20 years. So I know some things because I've been taught by God. So I get a prophetic word and I know right away, okay, that doesn't go against God, doesn't go against his word. So I'm going to receive it and let the Lord elaborate on it. And a lot of times from then on for days and weeks and months, God will begin to unfold the prophetic message. See, that's what people don't understand. They don't understand that that prophetic message is to grab your attention and to step you up into a new realm and that door opens. But you and I have to walk through the door and it's going to unfold and open up more revelation. Instead of saying, oh, that was good, that's great, mm -hmm, and then you walk away from the door, which many of us do because 
we don't have the proper influence and training to understand the purpose and the power and the importance of prophecy. That's why God is raising me up to help teach all of us because we need it. We've got to have it. So yes, I believe and I will obey your word. So be, when the next time it comes and you feel the skeptical uh, 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 response coming across, stop yourself and say, nope, I'm going to believe and obey in Jesus' name and then let God take you on the journey. Luke chapter 5. Verses 4 through 5. And this is where Jesus started to in, instill this in his disciples and the early original apostles. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch of fish. Now, he already had told them they came in in the morning because back in those days, uh, the water was so pristine and clear. A lot of times they would fish at night or the early morning because so then there's it was it, it's easier to fish because then the uh, brightness of the sun and the clearness of the water wouldn't give away the tactics of the fishermen and the nets and whatnot. And when it's darker, it's easier to catch fish. Plus, fish are moving around to feed in the early morning, whatnot. So they toiled all night. Fished all night, didn't catch nothing. They come in. Jesus asked to borrow their boat. I'm giving you a backdrop here. And he says he's teaching thousands on, on, the, on, the, on the beach. And so they pushed the boat off into the water a little bit so that they wouldn't, you know, overrun him. So now the whole beach and the coast is full of people. And Jesus is on the boat preaching and teaching. He's teaching for a long time. Then he notices the people are getting hungry. So he says, hey, Peter, let's go get them lunch. So he says, let's go out into the deep and toil. And, and Peter already knows, ain't nothing going to happen because I'm a professional. But watch the attitude of Peter here. He stops his skepticism. Watch what he does here. He says, go out and catch some fish, Peter, Simon. And Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word... I will. Woo. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Praise God. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. And what happened? We know the story. He caught so much fish that they had to get another boat and other nets and other fishermen to help him because the nets started to bust. They got so much fish. It was the biggest, greatest catch they ever had. And it caused people to uh, repent. It got, Peter fell on his face. Go away from me. I am a sinful man, right? This this uh, obeying God's word and, and it opened up the miraculous. Well, I see what I told you. You just do it. And the whole thing starts to open up. And all of a sudden, Peter, he starts to realize he's being called and he repents. And, 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 he, and then the people start to believe and it opens up a move of God that you otherwise would not have experienced had you took the route of Satan and questioned and doubted and blew off prophecy. If you would take Peter's uh, attitude and say, hey, you know what? It doesn't seem like it's going to happen and I just can't see it. But because you're God, Jesus, and because you work signs, wonders, and miracles, and you are true, at your word, I'm going to do it. And look what all opens up. You can read it. Read it. It's in, it's in Luke chapter 5. You can read the rest of the story. It opened up all kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles. You know, it doesn't even list all of what happened. But demon-possessed people, excuse me, were getting set free and delivered. And, and, and people were getting healed from all kinds of diseases and 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 uh, uh, all kinds of things. You know, people were getting their their uh, a miracle from God. It was awesome. It was powerful. Plus, they all ate a wonderful good lunch. Fresh fish. Hallelujah. God supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory. And all we have to do is believe. Now, so what's the results? The results of faith and obedience, because that's what it is. Faith is obedience and obedience is faith. When we decide to, I'm going to believe that prophetic message. I'm going to believe that prophetic dream and vision. I'm going to believe that prophecy. 
I'm not going to just view it as entertainment and emotional feel good and feel power. Because that's what a lot of people do. They feel that, you know, ooh, it's like, wow. It's an emotional high instead of, instead of a spiritual change. And I know I feel the emotion. Ain't nobody can tell me. I mean, a moment ago when I prophesied, I felt the surge of power. I felt the emotion. I felt the spiritual authority and power. I felt the Holy Ghost move through me. Oh, I love it. I feel it. But that's not where it ends. It causes a spiritual change. It causes a spiritual empowerment. It causes things to happen in your life that you could not otherwise experience or happen without God. So, results of the faith and obedience is simple. It opens up miracles. Miracles. You want miracles in your life? You want God in your life? Believe His Word. Believe the prophecy. Believe the message. Don't kill the messenger. It isn't His message, and it isn't even His authority and His power. It ain't none of her intuition or her intelligence it's all from god god jesus christ so luke chapter 5 verses 6 through 9 i'll read the rest of the story for you when they had done this they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both of the boats with fish so that they began to sink both boats. Hey, let's hurry up and get back to, you know, the shore we're sinking. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, for I'm a sinful man, Lord. Oh, Lord. For he and all his companions were completely astounded at the catch of fish which they had taken. Mm. So, you can say, did God really do that? Did God really say that? Is that really of God? Or you could say, uh, at your word, I'm going to believe and obey and then watch the results. Hey, this is why. God's words, dreams, and visions will come to pass. That's why. The prophecy will come to pass. If it's from God, our mighty God and Savior, Jesus Christ, it will come to pass even though it seems like it's taking too long or it's like everything is going against you or against everybody and it seems like it's all falling apart and it sounded like it was a lie but if it's from God it will come to pass with God timing is everything Isaiah 55 verse 11 Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 God said so will my word be which goes out of my mouth it will not return to me void, which is useless or resu without results, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. In other words, when God sends forth a word out of his mouth, it's going to have results. It's going to accomplish exactly what he sent it out to do. It will do and perform to the fullest extent of God's authority and power in which he sent it to do. It will not fail. It will succeed. Thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know the Lord, I've, I've seen some prophetic things come to pass. I've seen some uh, prophetic words, prophetic messages, uh, some prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, um, you know, personal word. Like a, a, a like a word of knowledge, but come as prophecy, uh, dreams and visions. I've seen some come to pass already, and I've seen some that are st we're still waiting for them to come to pass. But like I, I'll just bring out some that came to pass uh, three years ago. Matter of fact, almost four years ago. God, uh, I'll just say in two thousand sixteen. It'd be three and a half years ago. Let's just say three and a half years ago. Because I had a set of dreams in the beginning in January of 2016. And then three months later, uh, probably around April, I had another dream 
that ended up coming to pass three months after that. So within a six month span, within a six month span, those dreams that broke forth in that year came to pass. So I had some dreams in January and then I had some dreams in April and it came to pass in July. And so and it, it was amazing because those things, uh, that year was an opening, a prophetic opening, an apostolic opening in the spirit world uh, across the whole entire nation and world for for uh, the church, for the ecclesia, for the prophetic move of God, for apostles and prophets and prophetesses. That was a cornerstone year. And, uh, uh, and here's what happened. In January, I had some dreams that I was getting attacked by a scorpion. Another dream I got attacked by a black widow. And uh, uh, the Lord showed me what that was uh, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 2. The prophet Ezekiel is sent to the house of Israel to confront their leaders, uh, their political leaders, their religious leaders, especially the religious leaders. Um, he was confronting them because of their backslidden, their sin, their idolatry, all, all these things, their spiritual adultery, their adultery, uh, all their hidden sins. They, I don't have all the time to go into it, but God, uh, um, he prepared Ezekiel and said, they're going to be like a thorns, a patch of thorns. They're going to be like uh, scorpions um, because they're rebellious people. He says, don't, you know, their, their words and their faces are going to be vicious and malicious and violent. And he says, do not let that bug you. He says, they're going to reject you, but at least they will know. We don't know what time it happened, but they will know in due time that a prophet was among them. You can read it in chapter 2. So he showed me that. That's what that meant. And so I'd been praying and fasting. And then uh, three months later, the Lord gives me another dream. And this dream, uh, um, I was summoned by a bishop, a pastor, bishop, uh, to uh, go to a gathering. And uh, um, we were demanded and commanded to go. And... Um, so my wife and I go, and we're huddled into a room with other couples. There's other uh, prophetic ministers and their wives there. And uh, we were humbled and told, you will do as you're told, and you will sit on the floor. We were disrespected to sit on the floor on our butts on the ground. And then um, a, another bishop came out. Big, strong-looking, deep voice, you know. Um, and uh, this person, you know, uh, operates in the prophetic, but uh, he, uh, you know, he's more political. He's a company man, basically. You know, he's sold out to the institution. And so that's how he kind of uses his gifting. Well, um, because he's very influential in that gifting, uh, they were using him to kind of like, I guess, crack the whip on us to make us fall in line to obedience to them. Um, so that's what was going on. And so we all began to get accused in that dream. And this other uh, uh, bishop pastor who brought us there sat by watching to make sure we were getting our lickings, basically, by this other person. And all of a sudden I looked and I didn't have any clothes on. I was just in my underwear. And I was like, whoa, I felt like uh, like I was vulnerable and violated and like shame. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why am I, you know, in my in my underwear? And I'm like looking around like, you know, people can see me. And he started to ridicule me and accuse me of some things and and bring up some accusations that were totally unfounded and totally fabricated and untrue. And. So uh, I stood up for myself and in a calm, nice, uh, had a good spirit. I said, no, that's not true, sir. That's actually uh, not, that's not true. That is a lie. Um, no, that's not exactly what happened. And when I tried to explain what happened, he got angry. All of a sudden he became, instead of, you know, kind of like showing off his power and, and his authority and, you know, as a matter of factness, um, it switched and became, you know, violent and started to yell at me. 
And when he, he's starting to yell at me, all of a sudden I seen like American flag drape on me. And then I woke up. And so what the Lord told me was, is that that is exactly what is happening to the apostles and prophets in the nation of the United States of America, in our nation. Of course, that's where I am. That's where I live. But he was trying to tell me that that is what they're doing to legitimate apostles and prophets and prophetesses is that this institution, this organization, this religious uh, group was doing this. They were stripping and shaming and fabricating and 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 discrediting and suppressing and basically killing the ministry and the calling of apostles and prophets. And this was the state of apostles and prophets and prophetesses throughout America. Oh, sad. Okay. So, all right, I wake up, man, and uh I'm ready. I'm wow, you know, and so I start praying and fasting some more. And the Lord told me, now this is going to happen to you. I'm showing this to you because you're going to get attacked by the scorpions. You're going to get attacked by the black widow. You're going to get attacked by your religious leaders. Um, they don't realize that they're attacking me. They don't realize that they're just going to kill the messenger. They're going to attack the messenger like what, you know, carnal Christians always do, like what carnal Israel always did. They always attacked the messengers. They killed the uh, the messengers that God always sent. Um, and he said, that's going to happen to you. But I want you not to fight back. And I want you to keep the right spirit. You're not even going to prophesy over them because you've already prophesied plenty and you've already spoken. He says, but what you're going to do is when this and this and this and this happens, and when this person is, you know, mentioned and brought into the equation, he says, watch it. This is what's going to happen. And when it happens, I want you, when you see this transpire, to just depart with love, come out from among them and be separate and do it in a wonderful, beautiful spirit so that you are, uh, uh, your conscience is without offense before me and them. I said, okay, Lord. Okay, help me to do that. And so therefore, all of a sudden, a couple months go by, and the third month after that, which would be the sixth month, there's some prophetic movements, and some prophecy goes forth, and they try to shut down the prophecy. And all of a sudden after that, I'm summoned into a meeting, and it happens just as the Lord had told me. There was false accusations, there was uh, 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 fabrications, um, and there was a plan. Uh, first of all, they, uh, it was said that they didn't know what was going on, so they needed clarification. And then after that, they said, hey, for months, we've been working on how to deal with this. And they brought in that other bishop and quoted him and got his input on how to deal with us. Oh my gosh, couldn't believe it when they said that. It was just like in my dream. I uh, feel Holy Ghost right now just even uh, bringing it out to you. So the dream came to pass. Those dreams came to pass. Those three dreams came to pass in six months' time. And I was blown away that it was actually happening. And they even I've even explained this to some people, and they think I'm crazy. They don't believe it. A lot of people just, you know, you know they just don't see it. And that's okay. Well, it's not for you. It was for me so that I can be right with God even if they're wrong with God. And so when I saw my cues, I did that. I departed with grace. I departed with love, you know, and, um, and nothing evil can be said about me in that, in that meeting. Nothing, uh, you know, if there was, it's lies and God will bring it into judgment. But, you know, hey, I love them. I forgive them. Praise God. I am clean. I, I have a conscience void of offense, you know. It's all right. Joseph had dreams and his brothers did him wrong. Oh, here comes the dreamer. What did they try to do? Suppress and kill the dreamer, right? Sold the dreamer into slavery. And guess what? Later on, uh, they needed that dreamer, you know, and the dreamer had the right spirit. And so that's what I want to do. I'm the more, I know I'm an apostle and prophet of the Lord, and, and I know I'm, I'm blazing a trail back to the original formula of the New Testament church. Uh, and I know that I'm alone and I know there's not too many people close around me. You know, those that believe they're not either, either they're not ready or they're too afraid, plain and simple. And that's okay. 
I'm okay with that. You know, it's about God, not about me, not about them. It's about God and his, you know, his movement throughout this world. His word will come to pass. His dreams will come to pass. His visions, his prophecy will come to pass. So let's have the right attitude and response to prophecy, whether you are the avenue or whether you are the recipient. We've got to have the right response. Yes, Lord, I believe. Show me how I want to obey. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, hey, remember those prophecies? Through them, you make good warfare. In other words, those are your marching orders from God. Prophetic words, prophetic dreams, prophetic visions, prophecy, those are our marching orders from God that we are to obey immediately and start to delve into so that we can become a part of it and obey it and be in it. Not for our entertainment and not to just say, wow, that was good. God is with us and then go about our own business and do our own thing. That's not what it's for. That's what Satan does. Did God really say that? Well, you know what? Let's just do our own thing. Come on, let's go eat the fruit. Uh, you know, so you can get your own knowledge and you can be your own power and you can do your own thing. Come on now, you, you know, you don't really need God in that. You're good within yourself. You know, your little crew and your consensus and your core, you don't need God. You guys are smart enough to do it yourself. That's Satan. That's satanic. It's demonic. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that demon. I rebuke that proud uh, demon of unbelief and doubt and, and, and reasoning and all that demonic influence and that sensual garbage that comes from Satan. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Be set free, be loosed, be broken in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And just like those dreams and those visions and the prophetic word came to pass through me and in me, it'll come to pass for you. But you and I have got to learn to respond to prophecy correctly, the right way, the biblical way, the godly way. And that is, God, I don't understand. I don't know. But I know you're able and I know you can because you're God and nothing is impossible with you. All things are possible with you, God. So, nevertheless, like Peter, at your word, I will do it. I will obey. I believe in Jesus' name. Don't say, did God really say that? Because I really don't want to do it. Is that really from God? Because that's going to make me look stupid and I don't want to look stupid. That's making me step out of my comfort zone. And I like my paradigm. I like the status quo. I don't want to go against the flow. No, you're going to make me look dumb. And I'm going to look wrong. And I'm going to look like I'm crazy. So I ain't doing it. That is satanic. It's carnal. And it's that's the mindset of those who are hell bound. And who do not live a life of faith. For the just will walk by faith. And the carnal will walk by their sensual, lustful, demonic desires. And they won't inherit the kingdom. Those kind of people won't inherit the kingdom of God. And they won't even make it to heaven. We've got to all bear our burdens and bear, take up our cross and follow Jesus. Regardless of the ridicule. Regardless of the shame. Regardless of how stupid we look or how dumb we look or how ridiculous we look. Regardless of... What other people are going to think or say. We have got to obey God. We have got to obey Jesus above all things. So the proper response is. Yes Lord. Go ahead. Keep on prophesying to me. Keep opening it up to me Lord. I'm in 100% with you Jesus. Don't worry. There's millions of people that have not bowed their knee to Baal and that do obey God. They may not be in close proximity to me and you, but they're scattered all over the world and such is the ecclesia, the church, the body of Christ, which is people full of God all over the place. Let's pray right now in the name of Jesus. 
This prophetic word has gone out. It will not come back void, but it will perform what you intended to do. Everybody that hears this prophecy, ah, in Jesus' name, receive your miracle, receive your change, and let the prophetic realms and dimensions and the spheres be opened up unto you. In the name of Jesus, let your life be changed and miracles and signs and wonders unfold and become a part of your life, your experience, and your lifestyle, and your testimony. Receive this powerful prophetic word and change your attitude. Change your perspective and say, yes, Lord, I believe and I know you're able and I receive. Nevertheless, at your word, let it be according to as you have spoken it in Jesus' name. God bless you. You be blessed and do not despise prophecies, but respond to them correctly in Jesus' name. God bless you. This is Charles Barnett from Apostolic Gatherings Network. Peace of Christ in you and flowing around you. Amen.